Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. Uh, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? The dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful that we can gather together each morning and open your word and receive light uh, for our feet. And we pray, Lord, that um, as we study today, that you can give us a clear understanding of the truths that we are handling. We know that, um, that this light is given to bring conviction and power to our lives, to show us our sins and uh, the power to forsake them. And Lord, that we can also share these truths with others. Give us wisdom. Be with each person. May your angels watch over them. And may you guide us into all truth is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, good morning again. Um, now, you can see this is the chart we were looking at yesterday. So this chart incorporates the 1,533 days that Colin had presented on Sabbath, along with uh, the 186 days from July 18 to January 20th, 2021. Now we can see that there's also 187 days to January 21st, 2021, which is when the School of the Prophets was sold. And so I don't think we can ignore either of these, that these are both significant. Now the 1533 days uh, before Biden's inauguration goes back to Trump's uh, election when Trump is de declared president of the United States, November 9th, 2016. Now, um, the other thing is that we have uh, another period of 1,533 days, and that's from January 14th, 2017 to March 27th, 2021. So this is a period that Jeff marked, right? Um, well, he marked the March 27th and the March 27th, 2020, and the March 27th, 2019. So these are all part of these structures. And there's, so there's more here. There's the, uh, the parallel in our history with Samuel Snow's letters with that um, uh, June 9th to um, November 9th, 2019. So, so there's lots more to this structure that could be placed in here. So I, what I wanted to do was to bring out the 1533s and so we have these two 1533 days that create a type of prophetic mirror, right? So if we go from uh, um, November 9th uh, to January 14th, uh, that's going to be a period of, I can't remember the number of days I figured it out. So it's basically I don't know, around 70, it's not even 70 days, it's... 60 some days. Uh, let me see how long that is. I should actually have a chart with all these different dates in them. Um, so if I go from November 9th, 2016, I got some of these dates in here already. And I go to uh, January 14th. Yeah, it's 65 days. Okay. So, um, is there any significance there? So if we're going to take these, uh, this prophetic mirror of the 1533, and we're going to say from November 9th or this, um, to January 14th, 2017, so 2016 to 2017, is going to be 65 days. So is that significant in any way? Let me 
So I mean, this will be true at the end of this prophetic mirror as well. Oops, I didn't, yeah, I got that right. So then we know 1,533 days is also 219 weeks. So I'm just going to put that in there. Yeah, so we can take the 65 years for the start of the prophetic mirror, right? And also the and the end of the prophetic mirror and the sixth, uh, the 65 days from the first day of the first month to uh, uh, Pentecost. Right. So so 65 becomes the symbol. Now, we also have the 65 days in Collins study um, dealing with his prophetic mirror in his Trump prediction. Right. So if we remember that. And he had divided it up into 46 days and the 19 days, right? So there was more to it as well. But the fact that we have a prophetic mirror here of 1,533 days with the two periods of 65 days at the beginning and the end, we would have to say that this helps confirm or establish that this prophetic mirror is real, that it's not, it's not imaginary. Right. It's not just a coincidence. Now, we know that the one relates to um, to Trump. Right. The November 9th, 2016 and the connection to Biden. It also has this July 18th in there. Um, and this uh, 186 days. So the first day, of the first month to the 10th day, of the seventh month. But we have that same symbol in the 186 days uh, dealing with the July 4th to January 6th, right? So we, we have that um, in there as well. So, so you can see how these relate to each other. They both, in a sense, become symbols of October 22, the 10th day of the seventh month in 1844. Now, uh, what I added to this that wasn't in the diagram yesterday is the November 9th, 1989 to March 27th, 2019. So that's a period of 1,533 weeks. Now it's an inclusive count, um, uh, but the 1,533 weeks obviously can relate to the 1,533 days that we're gonna see from this January 14th, 2017, 1,533 days to March 27th, 2021. And we already had March 27th, 2020 in there with the 100 days of prayer, right? That were going to give us July 4th with the 186 days. That's going to begin a period of 10 days of prayer that's going to end on January 16th, uh, which is going to divide the 777 Chiasm into um, 433 and 340. That's yeah. so 434 and 343 days. So that's a whole other uh, study there, but we can see here that this 100 days of prayer has this March 27th date. The 1,533 weeks also gives us this March 27th, 2019 date, and that's the center of October 13th and September 7th, those Lambert Church, and I was at Warburg Church when and it's going to be Jeff's last presentation at Lambert Church, where I do these calculations. So in October 13th, 2018, I'm going to have, so I mean, I could put those in there. Um, uh, maybe I'll do that this way. Just bring these over here. And I'll just put these here. There's these smaller ticks. Right, so we got here. And that's going to be um, October 13th. So 
I'll do it in a sort of abbreviated way. So we'll just go. So that's where I'm going to count. Uh, that's going to be at Lambert Church, and I'm going to do this count and and arrive at uh, 391 days to. Um, oops. And this one's going to be. So that's going to be 63 days before um, November 9th, right? So the center date there is this. Um, March 27th, 2019 date. So it's 329. I think it's uh, 164 and a half days or something on either side of this. Okay, so that kind of makes sense. So we can see this March 27th date in 2019. This is something that I noticed on September 7th, 2019, when I was watching from Warburg Church, watching what Jeff was presenting as the last presentation at Lambert Church. Right. And he's going to be showing that the Omega is an apostasy. And we also have this March 27th date that's the center of these March 27ths, right? So we have March 27th, 2021, which we had established as part of our 777 structure. It's going to be um, at 252 days after July 18th. And so you can see here, um, when we put the 65 days there, um, you know, we have 186 days to January 20th. Um, but we're also marking, let me see here, how's this working? So if we put this here, so that's going to be November. Yeah. So the 1533 days, I think, uh, Collins is an inclusive count. I'm trying to remember if it is, that would make the most sense. Yeah. So it must be. And January 21st, 2021 is a cardinal count. So uh, so November 9th, 2016. Yes. Uh, let me see here. i got to make sure I do this right. So we got... Uh, so when I do this... That's interesting. Yeah, so I'm actually doing an exclusive, uh, an inclusive count. Um, so, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. So, um, so when I go from November 9th, 2016, it's it's an exclusive count to January fourteenth, two thousand seventeen. So that means I'm I'm counting the dates between those. So we're just going to leave it like it is. It's just simplified. The thing that's rather interesting is if we go from March twenty seventh, two thousand nineteen. So this this isn't easy to see here, but um, We have something that just shows up once we actually look at these lines. So March 27th to 2019 to March 27th, 2020 is how many days? How many days between these two dates? Anybody know? Okay, so... 
366. <laughs> so I'm just seeing if you're, you guys are sharp or not. Because remember, this is a leap year, right? So you're going to have the extra day added here. Okay. Uh, how many days between July 4th and July 18th? You're talking of the same year, or will it be 14? Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be 14 days. If, you, if you add 14 to uh, 186, what do you get? 200? Two, no. Yeah, 200. I don't know. My math is wrong. Okay. <laughs> so this is 200 days. And if you add 100 to 200, what do you get? 300. And you add that to 366, what do you get? Oh, oh I see what you're at. You know, 666. <laughs> well, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting. So I'm just going to put this in here. This is just. So when you go to, uh, uh, when you do this count here, this is going to be 666 days. So I'm just going to bring this here. You don't need that there. So you get 666 days. And now that's going to uh, the 666 days is going from March 27th, 2019 to January 21st. So if we went to January 20th, it would be an inclusive count. If we go to January 21st, it is a, um, a cardinal count, right? Now, I believe we may have noticed this before, right? So, um, but not in this structure, right? So, so is there significance that there's this 666 days to, you know, it'd be an inclusive count to Biden's inauguration and the cardinal count to the selling of the school of the prophets. So is this significant in this overall structure that we have the 1,533 weeks, then we have the 666 days. Stephen, you should have some comments on that if you're able to. We know there's a relationship between the 1335 and the 666, right? Yeah, I don't know if Stephen's quite, if he's able to. Come um, so, sorry, where does it begin? So we have this 1,533 weeks from November 9th, 1989 to March 27th, 2019. And then we have 666 days to the School of the Prophets being sold on January 21st, 2021 in this structure. Can you see the structure where you are? Are you, I can see it. So you can, uh, you can yeah, or can't? I can't. I, I can. Okay. So um, in January, so it just just tells me where where is the uh, six 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 beginning and the end again? So the six 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 March twenty seventh two thousand nineteen, and that's the end of fifteen hundred and thirty three weeks from November ninth nineteen eighty nine. Right. That's uh -huh. that's one thousand seven hundred and thirty one days is fifteen hundred and thirty three weeks, which um, as a symbol is has the ten, seven and the thirty one. But um, and then you have six hundred and sixty six days to January. Twenty uh, first, twenty twenty one. All right. All right. OK. I see it. And. and and so there is a relationship between the 1335 and 666 that you've noted. Right? Well, that, that's what the. Yeah, if I relate it to William Miller, you mentioned he put them together in a sense as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, so he puts them together because the beginning of the 1335 happens ap after a period of 666 years. Yeah. yeah. And then these so become yes, a more complicated structure when we add in the other 666 years. Right. So. So all, I, all I'm saying here is that we, we then can recognize that this structure is founded in the prophetic periods that this movement already understands. It has elements of the prophetic mirror, the 65 days. Right. And it has the 1533 days, which also can represent the 1335. Right. But also that's a period of time from August 11th, 1840 to October 22, 1844. But we got two periods of 1535 days. And that's going to connect us to March 27th, as well as the 1533 weeks. But we also get that 666 days. To me, this is the piece de resistance. Um, it's the thing that kind of ties it all together, that finishes off this, this particular structure. So what does it mean then? I mean, obviously the 66 days becomes, it, it connects the 1533 and the 1335. But what else is it telling us regarding this, this movement and this message or interpreting this line? Because what does this line mean? Because we have some dates, right? And and it, and we know that these dates exist as parts of structures. We have a prophetic mirror. Prophetic mirror is a significant structure. But if we're going to place an interpretation upon what it means, what do we need to to understand this? Is this structure really complete at this point? In the way that you're asking that, I'd have to say no. Okay. Yeah, so we know it's not, right? We can put December 25th, 2021 here at the end. And why would I put that there? Why would I... Why would I not end with this March 27th date? Why am I going to, you know, mark this 273 days? Is that needed in for this structure to make sense? What did the 273 days represent? In the context of this, what does December 25th, 2021 represent? And how am I going to tie that in to what else we have? So December 25th, 2021 is a symbol of the Sunday law, right? But there's lots of things that happen there on December 25th, 2021. Stephen is going to notice the 777 years from 457 BC to 321 AD, right? We're going to have Colin have a presentation on the Trump prediction on that date, right? So, so in order for this this structure even to sort of be here, it, it has to do with with Trump, right? So we're going to have this 
his interpretation of, of how we can understand this whole thing that we're studying goes all the way back to December 25th, 2021, why we're studying it in the first place. So God gave light to this movement on December 25th, 2021. There was also an invitation that was rejected on that date. So there's three kind of significant things about that. Now, of course, the structure could continue to build, but I'm just saying that here we need this uh, happening, right, in order for this whole structure to be complete. Now, notice this structure begins with November 9th, 1989. Now, we know that March 27th, July 18th are part of the 777 structure. Right. So really to make this at all uh, significant or meaningful, we have to complete that part of the structure. Right. So we need to have. Oh, that's why. There we go. Um, so we need to have in here those 63 days to, and I'm just going to do it as abbreviation here, there's not enough room, November 9th, uh, 2019, right? Whoops, yeah, that's right, okay. So we got that. So that's going to be here. This is going to be 63 days here. You know, this is going to be 391 days from November 9th, 2018. But this is part of that 777-day structure, right? So obviously, you know, I could put that in, but we're very familiar with this. Yeah, you can have 66 days from November 9th, 2016 to January 14th, 2017. Um, so I think he meant, uh, can we see here? I'm just looking in the chat. Yeah, so November 9th, 2016, this is an exclusive count, right? So when I put 65 days here, I'm, I'm doing an exclusive count. You could put 66 days, right? So I could put it as 65, 66. Right. Okay. So just... Okay, and then it says here, if threes and sixes went continually, it would add up to two, two. Um, okay, can you explain if threes and sixes went continually, it would add up to 22? That was just taking 1533 and um, 666, like if they had a fraction of a third and a fraction of two thirds. It would just be one more. Okay, I still don't understand it. <laughs> I was trying to re get the relationship between fifteen thirty three and six six six. Is all. Oh, okay, okay. Um. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, because it's 2,199, and you're just saying if if they were repeated like decimals or whatever, then it would add up. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay. Um, right. So here at the end with the 65 days is a cardinal count from – uh, January 21st to March 27th. But over here at the beginning, this is an inclusive count or ex exclusive count. Now, at Glen Park, when Jeff presents on Rafi and Panea, it's going to start on the Friday, which is the 13th, and it's going to go to the Sunday, uh, which is the 15th, right? So he's, he's actually going to finish it Sunday morning. So, so there is actually some leeway there. But we have the 65 days at the end, and the 666 goes to 
the January 21st date as a cardinal count, right? So if you went to January 20th, it would be 66 days to March 27th as a cardinal, right? So you can see that there's this, this things, things at the beginning at the end of the structures uh, of this six, 65 days. But we saw that with Collins too. He had an inclusive count for the 65 days that are gonna end on uh, January 11th, 2023. But we're not putting that in here because that'd just be way too messy. Oops, keep doing that. Okay, um, so we need that November 9th date in there. Now, what does that do then to the meaning of this structure? Because we have the November 9th. Now, uh, these November 9th are, are 30 years, right? We know that. And that's going to be... Um, I think it's going to be how many days? 10,000. Um, that's going to be where we add up uh, 3316 plus 7641. We, we had that in, yeah, 10,957 days. Remember, we had that in the story of, of um, uh, Jephthah, and then you're going to have the, I think it's Jephthah. And they're going to have the shibboleth. That's not Jephthah. Is it Jephthah? Yeah, it's going to be Jephthah. And you have the shibboleth, right? So you take um, the name of Jephthah and you take the shibboleth and you add them together and you get 10,957, the Hebrew numbers. And um, uh, that becomes, that's exactly 30 years. So so that that becomes significant. So anyway, the point is we have this November 9th date there, 1989, November 9th, 2016, and then we have November 9th, 2019. They're all part of this structure, right? So these November 9ths are all important. They're all related prophetically. Okay. So what does this mean then? Because what Colin is going to do, he's going to take the one period of 1,533 days, the one from Trump's being declared president to Biden's inauguration, and the 186 days from July 18, 2020. And he's, he's going to compare this to Millerite history, the 1,533 days from August 11th, 1840 to October 22, 1844. And then he's going to say July 18th is the first disappointment because he's going to line that up with April 19th. Right now, some of this goes against what he's arguing because at the time, you know, he's there, he's going to make an argument it's sort of separate, but he's going to say, well, Elder Jeff is come back and, you know, we're just going to accept that. Even though it happens after a date that he marks as the disappointment, the, the second disappointment, he's going to mark that as January 20th, which we had marked July 18th as the second disappo disappointment and November 9th as the first disappointment. That is, we're going to mark this. We know in this prediction here, this January 14th Glen Park study, when Jeff is going to talk about Paneum, he's going to talk about the pandemic that occurs between Raphia, which we come to recognize as November 9th, and Paneum, which we mark as July 18, 2020, right? So you can see how we can't just simply take part of this line and draw these conclusions. Right, that there's there's more involved, but the question is, what is this telling us about our line at the present time? Time and how to interpret January twentieth. So we see these as mirrors, as 
as structures, you know, with 186 days, both two periods of them, right? Two periods of 1,533 days that tie us to Millerite history. Can we just take one of them and make a declaration of that? Because we can also look at January 6, 2021 as October 22, 1844, because it's the 22nd day of the 10th month on the biblical calendar. And it's connected to this 100 days of prayer and the 10 days of prayer and 186 days, right? So how do we do this, right? I, I want your input. <clears throat> well, first, can we just take the one by itself and give it the application that Colin made? I don't believe so. Because we have two that give us two that are identical. Now, they're, they're, so we see that what Colin presented is correct, but it's incomplete. Now, we also have the 666 days, right, connected to the 1,533 weeks. So we can't ignore that. And, and, and it puts January 20th and January 21st as connected. That is, what happened with the inauguration of Biden, which we could say is external, is connected to what happened with the sale of the School of the Prophets, which is internal. But also January 6, 2021 is an external event related in prophecy to the United States, because we're going to mark that as the defeat of Persia by Greece, right, in some way, right? So the United States is conquered by Greece, by the globalists. So I know the structures become complicated, but we need to know these things. We need to know these things and how they're related and how do they help us interpret, the, interpret these lines. Now, part of it is... All of this is in the studies on the judges, for the most part. There's some little details here that we've noticed that we didn't notice, particularly um, these two different periods of 1,533 days and how they're interconnected in a prophetic mirror. So any other thoughts about what this can tell us about our lines? Now, we would have to assume that um, FFA at the present time is rejecting any of these types of lines. Right, because on December 6, 2020, they rejected the symbolic use of numbers, and it appears that they're continuing to do so that July 18th as a date is, is a deception, right? That was this movement going off course. You know, according to FFA. And, and that we really have to go back to 2012, you know, retrace our steps and then just say all of that history, we, we pretty much can ignore what we taught during then. So, so Colin's going to be saying, no, you know, we, we can accept what Jeff is saying now, even though he's rejecting all of these other things. Now, I'm not sure how they reconcile that, but. Okay. So Angela has a comment. Um, so she says, entering a new paradigm internally and externally, downfall of FFA, the School of Prophets, meant liberation for us to study for ourselves privately and collectively. So one of the things that we know that had to happen is, because when we studied the book of Judges, we understood that there was a, um, basically a culture of just writing people off. Right. Wasn't an open let's study together type of culture. There was a lot of misrepresentations of people that were going on gossip and rumors and so forth. 
and a lot of people just following others, right? Within the movement. So diff there was a lot of party spirit, people following Jeff, people following Parminder. And before that, people were following other movements. And, and we are seeking to have that stop, that, it, that the idea is not to follow individuals, that we have to study for ourselves. So, so that, that allowed us to, to study more freely, right, without the censure that was going on. Because with July 18th, when we were first studying it, you know, they shut that down, you know, within a few weeks of it. And, you know, Jeff had to be the one that revived it, right? That was, um, that had to be done because we really, as a movement at that time, we couldn't operate separately. We couldn't do that. But now we have the freedom, if you want to put it that way, to study for ourselves. Um, but there's also this external part, the end of Republican U.S., beginning the globalist takeover, and the repudiation of the foundations by America and I don't know what PTM is. Present truth move. Oh, the present truth movement. Okay. Okay. So, so obviously, yeah, there's a rejection of this message. I mean, Part of the problem that I have with all of this, and, and I've had this problem, of course, ever since being in this movement, is sort of the exclusiveness that occurs. That is, when you find some truth that nobody else or very few other people are looking at, um, there's this temptation to sort of think, well, you know, we're special in some way. But, you know, I believe that God is using all kinds of people all over the world, that we're not the only ones. Um, but we are understanding things that it appears no one else is understanding. And and these are, you know, fairly esoteric. They're, they're, they require a great deal of, of understanding of all kinds of things, biblical chronology, history, uh, you know, the history of the Millerite movement even events that are happening exclusively within this movement that people all around the world aren't going to know about. And, and you know, so we put dates like Jeff presenting at Glen Park um, Hall, you know, where he's presenting Panium, and, and we put it as part of a structure. And somebody looking on was like, well, how do I know if any of this is true? And, and what does this even matter? And why is there this small group who's noticing this? And, and then we're making claims you know, in Bible prophecy that, you know, when we get to this and we say, well, you know, when is, is, and we're saying, well, this is Biden and, and we're actually built into that prophecy itself. The people who notice when is, is, you know, this is, this is pretty tough stuff to take. Um, you know, if I was just, you know, running upon this video, on the internet, you know, let's say 20 years ago, uh, you know, with the way that I understood things 20 years ago, I would just dismiss this as a bunch of kooks, right? But we know that we have been moving through history and we have this understanding being presented to us. And, and when Colin does a study and he presents something that's true, like this 1533 and the 186, we can recognize that it's significant. But, but, but I don't think Colin can understand, and I'm not a criticism of Colin as a person, that he's like doesn't have the ability to understand. But because he doesn't have the knowledge of what this movement has been studying, what we have been studying, that he doesn't have a way to interpret it. Now, we know that normally what we would do is we would take this as a line and mark a, a period of darkness, a time of the end, you know, arrival of the first message. Now, there's a lot of dates here, uh, a lot more than seven way marks. And we also don't have a narrative. We don't have a Bible story that we can place here specifically and say, like we were doing with the book of Judges, uh, to interpret this. 
But we do have what we studied in the book of Judges in relation to these various dates. Right? So we, we can know some things about what it's saying in the book of Judges about this history and about this study. And what we've done in this study when we looked at Daniel's last vision is we did a thorough job of looking at the different options and all of the relevant passages that we could think of that related to understanding Xerxes as Trump, right? That's why we studied Esther. And we also studied all of the different periods of seven kings, right? And we looked at then um, Colin's understanding of Daniel chapter three. We looked at Daniel chapter three, Daniel chapter two. We looked at, um, uh, you know, in Revelation, well, we looked at Daniel seven, we looked at other things. And then Revelation 12, 13, and 17 that we spent a great deal of time upon. But now, so we want to know and understand this in relationship to when is is. That is why we're looking at this. So the question then is, how does what Colin presented and what we are now looking at help us in this study, right? Because remember, if we go all the way back, Colin is going to say, uh, five or fallen one is the one is is Trump, but we're saying no. That the one that is is Biden. Now, Stephen, I don't know if you had time to go over the studies from the last uh, uh, last week and and yesterday or the day before yesterday, Sunday. But do you under if you did, do you understand better what we're talking about with? The is when the is is why it's Biden and not Trump. Maybe not fully. I have to sort of. Um, continue to study. OK. Yeah. So so this is and, and when we, we remember when we started all of this study, we're not going to start with our conclusion and work our way backwards to try to prove it, right? That wasn't, wasn't the goal. We had, we might say a spiritual hunch regarding the fact that Trump can't be the next president or he doesn't need to be the next president. But there was, there was truth in what Colin had presented, but I knew that there was pieces of the puzzle missing that he didn't see back in December 25th, 2021. It wasn't a criticism of him as a person. It was just I knew that he hadn't studied all that we had studied in examining the foundations and that we knew we needed to understand the pioneer's view of these things and that we couldn't just dismiss them, right? That we needed to examine Revelation 12, 13, and 17. So initially, we did a study on the presidents of the United States um, on, on Friday nights. And... And I knew that we had to come back to Daniel 11 more thoroughly, which is what, what we're doing presently. But a lot of things unfolded within this movement um, in that period of time that would actually help us to come back and study uh, these things. So we're going to we need to know. Um, OK, so I'm just reading what Angela wrote. We have the Exodus, especially as 1533 figures prominently. That's the year of the Exodus liberation from bondage of private misinterpretations as we travel toward the promised land, heaven, liberation from one man or woman as in cults, right? And the one thing, you know, that, that I can say, you know, when we deal with the word cults, of course, that's kind of a misused word. Um, you know, what particularly is a cult depends on your perspective. But the idea is that we individually need to understand truths for ourselves. You know, if you're a Seventh-day Adventist, and you just go by what the pastor says or what, you know, the, the denomination says without any understanding yourself, you are in a cult, right? In my definition of it. Now, cult originally just refers to, you know, some kind of religious practices. But, you know, 
it, it's come to mean in the colloquial sense, you know, some sort of fanatical movement that's, you know, controlled by some leader or group of leaders. Um, but we know that we need to understand truths for ourselves. And so God has urged us to do so. He, he scattered God's people at various times, and he's brought in heresies at different times to allow people the opportunity to study truths for themselves, because we can't just depend upon what some person says. And so everything that we're trying to do here is in that regard. But anyway, going back to when is is, right? So we're saying that we need to know when is is in the seven kings. And our argument is that it's Biden is 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 rather it's it's not as direct and straightforward as just saying well here's John and he's in such and such a time and so when it says five or fallen one is you know we know exactly when is is but we do know that um, he does place it within a certain time within the time where the beast is not and a time before the 10 kings have one power, uh, uh, have uh, given power one hour with the beasts, right? They're king, they're going to be kings for one hour, right? Power is given unto them one hour with the beasts. So we know it's before then. Um, but then there has to be seven kings, and we'd have to decide what those seven kings are. And, and so we're using this model from all of the other seven kings. And then we line it up. And so we say, well, the only time it can be true that one is, five are fallen and one is, is in the time of Biden. But it's only going to be in the time of Biden that that can be recognized, right? So that's where I say this, you know, it's rather narcissistic, you know, in that sense. But nobody before then could know when is is until we're in the time of Biden. So we have to be brought to that. But when we look at this study of Collins, the question is, how does this help us understand when is is? How is this in any way related to the seven kings of Revelation uh, 17, right? That, that's the question. Does this give us information that's going to help us to know when is is? Because we have this prophetic mirror. So instead of looking at how Colin was looking at it and trying to find when the first and second disappointment is, because we know we have different options here. Um, if we look at January 20th as related to the prophetic year or prophetic mirror, what year is that? Is it 1798? Wouldn't that make more sense to line up January 20th based on these two, this, this prophetic mirror here? Wouldn't that make more sense to line it up with 1798 instead of October 22, 1844? Thanks. Um, great. Okay. Uh, call call um, Dwight first. I said I think the concept is right. Okay. And then somebody else made a comment. Stephen, I saw. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say what. Uh, what is the justification? Well, we have a prophetic mirror. The sixty-five days. And we're putting January 20th and January 21st together as a pair, right? So there's 1,535 days, either inclusive or ordinal count, uh, from November 9th, 2016 to January 20th, 21st, 2021. And then there's 65 days at the end of this mirror, right? 
So you got 1,533 days from the Glen Park pandemic prediction, right? So the point is we have a prophetic mirror and we have 65 days. And if we're going to say, well, that 65 days is a parallel, one thing, one way we could parallel it is saying that, that January 20th, 21 is 1798 and March 27th, 21 is 1863, right? But we, we could do that. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. It is okay. slightly different now because you had the 25 counties. Um, you had that 46 year period was really connecting the 25 counties, and then you had 19 years yeah. either side. Yeah, I understand. I understand that it's that, that it's going to be different, but but I'm just saying that we have a symbol that is a prophetic mirror symbol, where there is 65 days, right? So. So yeah, it does. It doesn't line up exactly in the way that the two twenty five twenties do, but it does give us that symbol of sixty five days. And, and so it's when we have at the end of the fifteen thirty three days, right? And you have this other fifteen thirty three days, right? You, you have a prophetic mirror, and that prophetic mirror has the symbol of sixty five. And if we're going to go to the beginning of the sixty five, it'd be seventeen ninety eight. But I'm just saying, and, and this is, of course, just one of the ways to look at this. So if this is 1798, and we're going to look at what that represents, it represents different things, right? But um, one of the things that it represents is um, a time where a message is coming because of a prophetic marker. Right. But it's, it's not necessarily going to mark a disappointment just because you have the 186 days from July 18th. It helps us recognize that structure as significant because we have two witnesses. But we can just say that that's a prophetic period. Right. Just like the 1533 is. So there's no reason to say July 18th is thus the first disappointment and January 20th is the second disappointment. It's insufficient information to draw that conclusion. But if we see the prophetic mirror, we, we can say that, well, here in 1798, it is true that five kingdoms are fallen. One is and one is yet to come. Right. So we can apply the riddle to and, and the way that I look at it is that the riddle of the seven kings comes from. Revelation 13 with the seven kingdoms where five have passed, one is, right? Five are fallen, one is. Well, we know the beast that was and is not, it is not in 1798, right? Does that make sense? So that means we can take this when... Biden becomes president as is. Right? Even if you just wanted to say that the five kings are the seven kingdoms, right? And that we're making a parallel like Colin is. And, and this was one of the things that was brought up at the time when Colin presented it on December 25th, 2021. Um, I can't remember who brought it up, whether it was Daniel Fontenot. I think it was Daniel Fontenot. And, and he was trying to say, well, shouldn't you have a parallel between the five are fallen and the one is with the kingdoms? Right. That was what he was implying in his question. It wasn't as clear as that. But you can see then. As of January 20th, 2021 or even back to January 6th, because these are also prophetic mirrors, right? The 186 days. Um, and, and the way that we mark that, the end of July 4th to the beginning of July 18th is 13 days or 18,720 minutes, right? And so that would be true if you went to the end of January 6th and the beginning of January 20th, you'd still have that same 13-day symbol. But 
leave that out for now. Um, can we see then that, that this parallel makes more sense based upon what Colin has presented when we start to put it together? That it shows us that the one is must begin on January 20th, 2021. That's when is is. Any comments on that? My thinking would be maybe December 25th, 2021, when Colin presented that study. Well, but, okay, so when Colin presents it, it's already true that Biden is president and has been president since January 20th, 2021, right? So, yes. So when Colin presents it on December 25th, 2021, it's still in the time of Biden. So the one is can't be Trump. You have there the end of the 777 days. Yeah. And uh, in 1798, if that was the time they end, it's paralleling, it's paralleled by 1989 to 1991. You have yeah. 777 days there. Mm -hmm. So you, get, you had that connection. And that was one of the suggestions I made that maybe Trump would have been the one is because he was 70 years old, seven months and seven days when he uh, it was the seventh day when he took office as well. So okay. you have it. Mm -hmm. So you have a 777 there in a sense. Yeah, see, I would think that that actually would more support the idea, though, that um, because this is about a transition in, in, in Revelation 13. Uh, this is about a transition from uh, the papal beast to the United States. Right. Because Revelation 13, even though it's talking about, um, you know, this first beast, but the primary purpose of Revelation, or Revelation 13 is to show the transition from papal Rome to the United States. Right. I mean, it's going to show us this history of this this beast, but because it has seven heads and one is wounded unto death, it's bringing us to the time of the wounding of that head and the rise of the second beast. So, so the line there dealing with Trump and Biden is showing us the same transition, but this time it's going to be from the fifth president to the sixth president. So I understand what you're saying with the 777. The 777 is going to end on December 25th, 2021. But at that time, Trump is not president. Right? Biden is going to be president. The other thing that we have there is the 666 that's going to end on January 20th, 2021. Right? Yes, and uh, and I had already noticed as well. The two six six. There's a six 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 in Millerite history, and a seven yeah. seven seven mm -hmm. as well. So yeah, so so that's also going to help mark the end of you know Trump and the beginning of Biden, if that makes sense. I mean, here we're sort of paralleling Trump with, you know, the papacy, but but there's a reason here. It just has to do with this transition of power from the fifth king to the sixth king. So what you're saying supports as much the idea that Biden is the one that is, if we take into account all the information. Because we know Trump has the 777 attached to him as well, right? Yes. But he also has a 666 attached to him. Mm -hmm. 
So at the end of the 666 days, Biden is president. We can now say that that also parallels 1798. And that just just in that symbol of that transition from the papal beast to the United States. Here it's trans it's it's symbolizing from Republican to Democrat. So it's not the same creature, so to speak, but it's the same structure. And it's it's the five, the six, from the fifth to the sixth. So I would say it's supporting that the one is is Biden. Not Trump. And it's not going to be noticed until after Biden is president. Right? It's first going to really be presented December 25th, 2021. Now, Colin's going to try to backdate it. Right? But we can see from the structure here, he can't really do that. He can't really backdate it. We're moving through this structure in our understanding. A any other thoughts, Dwight? Not yet. Okay. Just your mic was on, so. Right. Yeah, I think it was uh, Daniel Fontenot. He said that the f he was parallel paralleling uh, that it would be the fifth. So if you're yeah. saying Trump's the fifth, Daniel Fontenot was saying it was the fifth, so that would be yeah, it. yeah. That was because it's just when Colin's first presenting it, you know, Daniel Fontenot's like, well, and I'm pretty sure it was Fontenot, um, you know, it should be the same, right? And 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 that was just kind of brushed aside by by Colin, um, but I took note of it, but that's all I did, and I didn't draw any conclusions from it. But I took note of it at the time. Um, so, so to me, this this supports what we're saying about and and the other thing is about if we look at at Artabanus and Biden, we we definitely can line them up, right? So because we line up Xerxes and Trump, um, and. You know, that makes Artaxerxes the seventh. But in the line that, that Colin has is he's going to have, you know, Biden as the seventh, right? He's going to put Trump again as the eighth. And, and so that doesn't line up with the Persian kings. So, so if we're going to just take this parallel with the Persian kings and the kings of you know, Judah and how we have the eighth there with Christ and the beast is counterfeiting it. This would give us more credence to the is. The, the question that we have, though, is we can line these up, but then we have to say, how can John be in the place where is is Biden, right? That we can we can talk about it in that sort of present tense. How is John there? And, and the way that we put John there is with this third, uh, the, the beast of chapter 13, the, the beast that comes out of the sea. This beast has that characteristic where five are fallen and one is. Right. That's going to be the power, the second beast that's going to rise up in 1798 and make an image to the beast. And since. This structure gives us that same idea with the 666 days and the 1533 days and the 186 days ending on January 20th. It gives us a parallel for our lines to say is is Biden. It's in the time of Biden that we have to say is is. So it's where we are now. So we couldn't have said that before in the present tense, that five or fallen one is when Trump was president. But we can say it when Biden is president. And so this whole structure witnesses to the idea that Biden is the sixth 
and he's the one that is. And, and that is only understood in the time of Biden. And we know that this movement presented it in the time of Biden. For Colin to sort of try to backdate it, say the one is, is in the time of Trump. The way that he tries to do that, so how does he try to do that? How does he try to say, well, this is in the time of Trump that the one is? What is his reasoning? I think it is connected to July 18. I don't remember him doing connecting it to July 18. I think his main argument, from what I remember, just has to do with his count. Right? That is, he doesn't do anything to say to place John in that, in that time, right? And this is why Daniel Fontenot's argument doesn't really make sense, or, or it makes sense We're call, against what Collins doesn't make sense. Because if you're going to make this parallel to the beast's of you know, Revelation 13 to the heads, even though you're putting them in Revelation 17, the same heads. But if you're going to say, well, there's Babylon, Media, Persia, Greece, Rome, um, and then you're going to make this parallel, you're going to, you're making an application, right? So he's making an application from the seven heads, but then he just has to create a count that's going to make Trump the fifth, right? That's basically his argument. It's nothing to do with July 18th that I saw in, in any of his studies. It's just simply we have this count. There's we're going to parallel it with the kingdoms. And if we start the count at Reagan. Then. The five are fallen are going to be all the way up to uh to Obama, and then the one that is is going to be Trump. That's his whole argument, right? There's no nothing else that I saw where he he really tries to place where is is. His argument comes from the kingdoms, and then from the count of the presidents. But that count of the presidents, that's what we saw that it doesn't work, right? From what we have understood about these lines, we can't make Trump the sixth. The only way we could do that is make Reagan one. But that means Reagan has to line up with Cyrus and Bush the first with Cambyses and Clinton with false Smyrnas, right? Right. Bush the first with Darius. And then, well, you'd have to have Obama line up with Xerxes, right? You understand what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't fit. The only way you can make Xerxes Trump is if Cyrus is number one. Right of the kings of Persia. Because that's how we've lined up the kings of Persia with the presidents. Now, when we originally did this, um, you know, we just didn't keep counting, right? We took, you know, there shall three stand up in Persia from Cyrus, and then, then the fourth would be Trump in that count, right? Just because Cyrus is counted as zero. But when we line up the kings of Persia, the kings of Judah, we would have to line them up in this way, especially when we look at the times of the ends with Darius the Mede and Cyrus and Reagan and Bush. You have to place them in this way. So his whole argument, the five are fallen one is, applying them to the presidents, would have to put... Trump as the fifth, if we're going to look at it and be consistent. And this would line up with the kingdoms. So that's the reason why I believe that they're going to use that five or fallen one is and one is not yet come is because we have that model already in the heads of the beast of Revelation 13. So, I mean... From my, from my point of view, I think this is settled, but, you know, people may still have other objections to it. But I would think this, this to me, this diagram here in front of us, 
really illustrates this with this prophetic mirror that we we have to declare that the one is has to be Biden and it has to be marked as January 20th, 2021. Because it ends 666 days, which is following 1,533 weeks from our time of the end. And it, it has this 1,533 days from when Trump is made president. So it's all about this transition. Um, but we also have the other 1,533 days recognized by this movement that gives us these 65 days whether it's 65 or 66, it you know depends if it's an exclusive count or a cardinal count. But we also pair together uh, January 20th, 2020, uh, 20 and 21, the Biden becoming president and the sale of the School of the Prophets, which occurs, you know, 187 days after July 18th and is sold for. Uh, 18.7% below the asking price. And uh, there was another thing there too, dealing with, with that. So, so we had all these symbols attached to that. So we can't ignore that there's sort of two events here uh, marking this mirror, one external and one internal. Um, and then we have, you know, the other 186 days as well, which gives us this, you know, this dual, um, it, it gives us the, the, October 22 date, but we wouldn't mark July 1st as the first disappointment and January 6th as the great disappointment, right? So just because we have 186 there as a symbol, we have other symbols and they all have to be taken into consideration. So yeah, so we're gonna have, and I'll just put it in here because I think probably just helps a little bit to visualize this, you know, we're going to put this. Um, Seven hundred and seventy-seven days in here. I'll just put that in there. Right. <clears throat> so, you know, we put, you know, call in study there on December 25th, 2021. Definitely is a way mark in the understanding of all of this. And so I think Stephen's idea that, well, if you're going to put the one is, uh, I know this somebody looking at this chart and writing one is. Um, but I'm going to put this here, one is. That has to be true then, right? So you couldn't say one is prior to January 21st, 2021, but we are recognizing it on December 25th, 2021. Because that's when that light opens up to us. It's still not completely studied and understood at that time, but we can see that that, that would make sense. So, I mean, it's true since January 20th, 2021. But we, we can, we're saying that God is showing us this on December 25th, 2021. So I, I, I know this takes a lot of thinking, but we've spent time going through this. Is there anything that we can criticize about this, this diagram? That we can say, well, you know, that's just not correct. I, I, I don't see that we can. Right? We, we could definitely, you know, label these way marks better so that people know what they are. But 
it, I, I think it, it clearly establishes um, what it is we've been trying to find out. That is how to understand that riddle. So, you know, one of the things we have to decide, I guess, at this point is, are we going to, um, you know, con continue studying Daniel chapter 11? Because I, I think we're finished with Revelation 12, 13, and 17. Now, I don't know what Colin was really asking me to do. I mean, because I'd said we need to understand Daniel chapter 11. Okay, so Angela says, after labeling Waymark's extension to um, April 5th, 2030. So I don't know. Um, I mean, definitely we could put April 5th, 2030 in there, but that would require a lot more uh, Waymarks to be placed in here to establish that. Um, so... So I don't quite know what to do about that. Hey, Theodore, brother Theodore. Yeah. He wanted you to go through. He wanted you to go through chapter eleven, verse by verse. But right. That's, that's what I told you. Yeah, because because that's what I said I wanted to do, right? Um, but what I don't know is how he thought that that's going to relate to what he is talking about. I think as far as his study, that we've covered that, I still think that we should go through Daniel chapter 11, and, and that maybe when we start going through Daniel chapter 11, it's going to be similar to when we went through the book of Judges, that we're going to be able to draw these on a line in our history. But I don't know how that's going to happen, like how – how that line would unfold, right? Uh, the only thing that I can think of, so, so here's me just thinking on my feet, that we know that the end and the beginning are tied together, right? One of the things that happened when Jeff started to recognize that the beginning of Daniel chapter 11 addressed uh, Daniel 11, verse 40 to 41. It addressed our history, that there was a repeat of history going on, right? So, so when we look at Daniel chapter 11, we know that there is a repeat of history. And um, so we have, uh, you know, 40 to 45, we had this king of the north, king of the south thing. And, and Jeff had not considered before, even though there's a lot of the same symbols, that all of Daniel chapter 11 related to uh, illustrating that history. But it first began when we started to look at Raphi and Pania, right? But, but even then, we could say it goes back further to when we just started to look at the first few verses that we could um, take those and place them as the presidents of the United States, right? Though only in an in incomplete sense, only going up to Trump, not, not beyond Trump. But, but that's kind of where it started. So... You know, back in 2015, he's going to, you know, notice this in 2016, right? So they're going to make the Trump prediction regarding the Trump. He's going to become uh, the president, possibly, right? And and then at the end of 2016, on December, whatever it was, 17th or something like that, um, you know, Jeff is going to attend the meeting where Chow Tu is presenting um, Rafia, okay? So that's going to be yeah December seventeenth, two thousand sixteen. It's on a Sabbath, um, and then Jeff is going to uh, present a short study about that at uh, Lambert Church, and then he's going to present it in in Warburg, Glen Park Road, which is Park, Glen Park Hall is not far from Warburg, where I went to church. And um, so when he presents that there, he's going to deal with Paneum, 
and also the pandemic, right? That's going to come between Raffia and Paneum is how he places it between those two waymarks, which we didn't have established as November 9th, 2019 and July 18, 2020. Later we did. So we saw that the pandemic came in that history. So there's lots, lots addressing all of that. Um, so what I'm saying is that maybe Daniel chapter 11 illustrates um, the kings at the beginning, but that each time we go through it, it's going to be showing the history of this movement, just like we did with the book of Judges. So starting at 1989 and going to maybe 2030, or whatever it's going to show us. Okay? So that we need to do this just like we did with the book of Judges. So is that what people want to do? Continue on, even though we finished this Revelation 17, and I think we've answered uh, Colin's call and study, you know, we've studied that, uh, the kings, the presidents, but we still need to keep studying. So are people on board with that approach? And, and are we finished yes. with? Okay, so you say yes. And, and we should be finished then with these lines. I mean, they're going to come up again. But as far as um, right here, having these, these, we're, we're going to have to argue that Biden is the one that is, right? So, so that's what that's showing us. You know, the one that is, is Biden. And that, that comes from all the things that Colin has presented. He, he keeps providing us with information that when we examine it, shows us these things, right? So Colin wasn't intending to, to show us this whole prophetic mirror, but we now can see it. Okay. Okay, so if everybody's okay with that, that's what we're going to continue doing um, in these studies. We'll continue on. Okay, let's, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we are grateful uh, for what you have shown us in these studies. Um, and um, we ask for your continued help in our personal studies, in, and we pray for others who have been studying, that, that, um, and that all of us can be corrected in our characters and in our understanding. Forgive us for our sins. Help us to trust in you. And we leave all things in your hands. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.